Cool. Awesome. All right, folks, um, thank you so much for joining. Um, I, I, I really, really appreciate it. Um, it's it's super rad and cool and, and hip of uh, of everybody to join. Um, I apologize for the load shedding killing my Cintiq today. So if anyone was here to watch me draw, that's not going to happen. Um, but that said, we're not really going to talk about drawing per se today, right? Mm -hmm. um, the thing we're going to talk about mm -hmm. is something that is very often overlooked um, in animation. Uh, it is a very animation specific uh, uh, task. However, I found that it works for illustration, it works for comics, it works for, you know, really, really everything that you want to do at the end of the day. Um, and uh, the, uh, the thing in mention in, in question today is, is what's known as layout work booking. Um, so it's, uh, it's not something you're going to see a lot uh, nowadays in, in, in our like, digital animation realm. It's not something um, I've had a lot of uh, experiencing in industry, whether I was boarding at Floyd or whether I was um, doing layout at Mind's Eye. Um, however, it is an old, tried and true analog um, Disney methodology that we learned at Kublan. And uh, we used to teach at SCAD as well. And it, and it does make a bit of a difference in how you plan stuff. So in terms of uh, the, the execution or, or what it is, it's actually very, very simple. And if you look at it, you might go, why do this? Why, why waste my time spending so much um, effort doing this weird step between storyboarding and, and layout? Um, but the fact of the matter is, um, once, once you get into the habit of doing this, you sometimes, if you do it right for your like lower tier, easier shots, it actually um, prevents or uh, makes superfluous uh, the layout steps in um, like your lower tier shots, especially if they have legacy materials like uh, pre-used backgrounds or not specifically um, new character designs or anything like that in your series. So uh, yeah, before we get started with 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 layout workbooks, though, I think we'll do we'll have a chat about layout proper, um, maybe next week or the week thereafter. Uh, for today, we're going to start with the first thing, all right? Which is which is layout workbooking. Um, just a quick question: How many guys of you know what layout is, um, or what do you understand layout to be? Anyone get a give it a stab? Um, it's it's like a blueprint kind of it's like uh it's like having a bunch of static poses and stuff that you place around a scene something like that then you manipulate them to kind of tell a rough of what's supposed to happen in the scene or something okay yeah cool so you're not wrong um that's uh that's basically character layout so um, a, a way to look at character layout is in between storyboarding and animation, before you actually give an animator the animation he needs to make, there's actually a very, very large amount of information that the animator needs to have regarding the character before they can just animate. You can have, you know, like the most talented team on earth with the most talented group of people, and they'll all draw a little bit off model. And if the pose that they're drawing in the animation is not a pose in the model sheet, and I give this pose to six different people, they're going to interpret that pose six different ways. And five out of the six are probably going to draw the character off model or make some sort of mistake, right? Because they're using their own imagination to fill in the blanks instead of using a model sheet, right? So character layout's job is to take a look at what the storyboard presents and then take a look at what the model sheet and the character designs are, and then to pose the character um, in 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 the in the layout on model, right? And uh, this this has you know like different tiers, different tranches, and every studio will, will will do this slightly differently, of course. But that is essentially the gist of it. Whether you're working in cutout, whether you're working in traditional animation. Now, at the same time, however, that's the character layout. 
you also have what's known as environmental background layout. So the background layout is actually the more intricate, more important one. And what it basically comes down to is it is the blueprint diagrammatical in, uh, illustration of what goes into a shot, right? Um, how many layers of my multiplane camera am I using? How many characters will there be? And, and essentially what are overlays and what are underlays? Um, and I'll get to overlays and underlays in a bit. And then if there are effects, the layout artist will illustrate and demonstrate what the effects will be and where they will be placed. And if there are props, it is also the layout artist's job to demonstrate these are the props, this is where they go, right? So um, essentially, the way you can look at layout then as a whole, right, is it is a mini directorial package. The layout artist is the director of the shot, right? Whereas the the storyboard artist can 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 be seen as the director of the scene or the sequence, depending on the vernacular you use. If you're working at Floyd County, you'll be using a live action vernacular. If you're working in other places, you might be using storyboard vernacular. But uh, the the storyboard artist will dictate what happens in the in the scene, right? And the layout artist is going to dictate how to compile and composite the shot. Now, sometimes you're going to have character layout only, and sometimes you're going to have environment layout only. So at Floyd County, for example, the layout was mostly character when we were working on, on um, Archer. And uh, at Mind's Eye, when we were working on Twende, the layout art was mostly um, for background art, right? Because there wasn't time to do character layout on top, although I do actually think Ryan and everyone did start using character layout later on. I wish I could show you guys my uh, twin day layouts. Um, unfortunately, they're still under NDA, so that's not really something I can discuss. Um, but I can show you guys some older materials from my, from my showreel. So before we do that, let me share my screen. And we're going to take a look at why, why this is so freaking important, right? Like, why are we, um, why are we concerned with layout? And I'm going to use, you know, like a very, very good example here uh, from, you know, like the OG of, of, of environment layout, which is uh, Akira. Now, if you guys haven't seen Akira, I'm going to be honest. I think the story is a little mid. It's not, it's not the greatest story I've ever seen. But uh, in terms of the technical execution of the animation to this day, right, to this day, like, 40 fucking years later, there's still people can't do what they did with, with Akira, which is nuts. Um, I'm going to take a good, good example here um, of what um, layout would be, all right? So why we need the layout. And I'm going to pick a... Um, well, let's, uh, let's do the bike chase instead. I don't think that the opening is just the one um fixed perspective so we're gonna grab yeah here we go and then everybody melts that's great thank you very much they will die yada 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 you guys can see my screen right the share yeah yes okay awesome so even in a simple shot like this one, right? Let's let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at this shot, right? So, who can tell me how how this shot was made? This very simple uh, lateral track. So, this shot is actually two different backgrounds, right? Um, and, and what they would do is they would overlay the darker value background on top of the lighter value background. And then they've got a film mask. This is, you know, old analog days. So they would have a film mask around the, the two backgrounds. And they would move this, like, literally frame by frame across the, across the screen. So the job of the layout artist is the guy, he looks at the storyboard that said this happens, and he then goes and explains to everybody how we're going to do this shot, right? Uh, another simple one would be this one over here, where we see the characters um, round a corner, right? They're actually coming out of the alleyway and then riding. 
So how did they plan this shot, right? Because if you're just going to paint a background, right? But you guys didn't think of this. If you're just going to paint a background in, in analog, right? Are you going to um, animate from this cropped area here? Because if you don't, right, uh, the, the, the bikes can't be seen. Uh, or, or just going to overlap on top of what we have. Um, how do you know where where to to place what to make sure that it feels like it's moving out of the alleyway? So the the layout artist is the guy that plans. Okay, so this is the shot, and I've got a background, but then I have my animation on a layer overlaid on top of my background. However. I also have this bolding over here as a layer overlaid on top of my characters so that when they're animating and moving past it, right, they're just moving. It, it, it gives you the illusion of them moving behind, um, behind this bolding. So the layout artist's job essentially is to know where do I cut the overlay? Right, where exactly do I and it's 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 really right about here, like this this area here, just this spot here is overlaid on top of these two in, in the traditional analog saints, right? And they then plot out to know that the cat the, the special effects animation of the lights and the motorcycles you'll notice never move in this area over here where the building is. They they move here at the bottom down. So there's actually, you know, with the characters with the with the hit hit lights right on top of all of this is a cutout, analog cutout of this area in the in the in the building first. It's the layout artist's job to know where this gets cut and where should what be overlaid. Now to complicate matters even further, the three motorcycles are also overlaid on top of one another with Canada being at the top, uh, this guy at the bottom, and then this motorcycle over here, again, never overlapping over this guy. So he's actually underneath him. And then you can see they're actually animated. Um, they didn't animate it, they, they added that shadow. Now, what's interesting as well is when you actually look at it frame by frame, suddenly the, the illusion of the movement, right? It, it's dispelled. And it actually feels very floaty, which which goes to show how much uh, magic there is actually in um, in animation. Just note for a moment that they even changed the direction of the shadow of this bike as he's as he's moving here. Never mind the light rails. Um, so what you're looking at over here with just this character is I've got an animated shadow. Um, overlaid on top of my background, and then I've got my motorcycle and guy overlaid on top of that, and then I have my effects, my light effect overlaid on top of that. So it's one, two, three layers with just this guy, right? Now let's multiply that by three, because we've got <clears throat> this dude over here. So one, two, three overlays here, one, two, three overlays here, one, two, three overlays here, and then finally this building overlaid on top of it. So this very simple looking scene, right? Even with the technical animation, which is masterfully done, the layout in this very simple shot is exceptionally complicated and hard to plot out, especially if you're working in analog. And uh, if you're gonna try this in digital, you'll also know it's, it's, it's really um, many times actually the digital work makes it um, even harder. So you're looking at 10 layers of work that gets put into the shot. Now, the storyboard artist isn't the guy that would figure this out. The storyboard artist just thumb sucks an idea and comes up with it, all right? And the animator doesn't give a shit because he's busy animating. And the background artist isn't going to know either because the background artist is just going to go off with the diagram that the layout artist goes. So if you don't have the role of layout in your sequence, um, you set yourself up for disaster, for like very, very serious, very serious mistakes. And that in a simple shot like this one. Oh, we actually have more underlays because I forgot about the, the, the dust trails over here, right? So that is essentially the job of the layout artist is to, to plot out 
all of all of these movements, all of these things. Now, if you if you take an even more complicated sequence um, like this one over here, uh, which seems so simple, right? But it's it's probably one of my favorite traditionally animated sequences because it is so incredibly complex. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a very far background underlay of the of the road overlaid on top of that i have this guy and a bunch of other characters um overlaid on top of that i have the reverse animation of these two guys made opaque or transparent to emulate the reflection of glass then i've got the front overlay over here and you can actually see the coloration here is very flat which means that these are props right they're about to be animated things are going to touch where the flat colors are in your old um, analog stuff. So where these guys are sitting then overlaid on top of them is this table. And we know that this bike is gonna come crashing down. So overlaid on top of that are these three props that are to be animated. And overlaid on top of that is this guy over here, right? So it's an immensely dense shot to make, um, even when you're doing it in analog. Honestly, if you're going to do this shot digitally, uh, most PCs would not make it. Uh, if you're going to do a shot this complex in harmony with this this many rigs and these many characters, uh, chances are harmony can actually not handle a shot like this. Let that sink in, guys. We're actually like moving backwards um, in what we can handle in terms of animation. And then we've got another underlay guy over here. So this dude is overlaid on top of that, but underlaid beneath this. And we've got this little nice foreshadowing moment. And let's just keep going. Bop, 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 bop. This guy runs away. And again, the moment you actually look at it in terms of layout frame by frame, suddenly a lot of that magic kind of disappears, right? Um, and it feels a little floaty, which is, again shows the strength of actual animation. And here comes the, the motorcycle crashing through. Now, the moment this happens, my arrangement changes because these shards of glass that are animated, right? They're animated hopefully on one layer if they're smart, but I've got the curtains as an effects layer. I've got these plants, the ferns, as an effects layer overlaid on top and then these shots, these sequences actually switch places in, in terms of overlay here and there, which you can't really do a lot, right? You can't get away with that so much in, 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 in layout. It's, it's, it's very, very, very hard to do, which is why also the actual effect here is all but one, two, three, four, five, six. It's about, yeah, it's about eight frames, eight frames total to get this done. And even this guy again with a motorcycle, right? You've got the motorcycle behind him. He's overlaid on top of the motorcycle and the motorcycle's handlebars are overlaid on top of him, right? And then when you get back to this shot over here, and you really forget how violent the show is if you if you don't pay attention. And look at the model uh, change over there. That angle's wrong. I and mean, then that's something like that. Really pretty, pretty gruesome stuff. Um, you know, that's a cure for you. So an immensely complicated shot here, right? And to be able to do this, guys, if you're just going to do layout, if you're just going to draw background and do animation, um, it should be clear, right? Um, and, and I hope, I hope I'm, what I'm what I'm trying to illustrate here and, and hopefully is, is, is coming through is if the only thing you're doing is drawing backgrounds and adding characters on top of them. You will fail, right? There's no, there's no question about it. You will not, you will not do good, right? Like it's, it's going to mess up, and you're going to be spending an immense amount of time trying to figure out how to do this in comp, where what you should have done is know exactly how you're going to do the shot before you start production on it. Uh, does that make sense so far? So far, I'm following. Um, guys, if you have questions, please do ask. That makes sense. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, cool. I well, moving on. Again. Yes. Um, so, 
when you're drawing the layout, so you will separate the different layers. So like yeah. the foreground, middle ground, and background in the actual like line drawing before you get to background painting. Oh, well, actually, no. Before you do that, you're going to make a layout workbook to know where goes what. So that's exactly what a what a layout workbook is, right? So that's what we're going to be talking about. If you're just going to, and also the vernacular is very, very important because if you're just going to think about it in terms of foreground, midground, and background, it's not going to work, right? Because, like I just mentioned, showed there, there's perhaps twenty layers in that multiplane camera right like let that sink in there's easily 20 layers of work stacked on top of one another in that one sequence so the idea of a foreground and a midground and a background it, it, it deteriorates with anything that is not an exceptionally simple shot so uh, what we're actually talking about then is underlays overlays and then differentiating between underlays and overlays, which which I'll um, explain a little bit um, in a moment. Um, cool. Does that help? Um, yes. So I, I think you will explain a bit more um, later. So before you like just draw the line drawing, and then afterwards you do the the workbook. No, you're going to do the workbook first. Okay. Yeah. Also, yeah. Again, guys, I'm terribly sorry for the for the bad lighting and and, and all of that. But uh, you know, they, I, I do see some folks from America here. So for the for the folks from the US, uh, this is normal in South Africa. We have power outages daily, um, about four hours a day on average. We don't have power, so I'm actually running off my battery and using my phone as a modem. Okay. Anyway, so let's take a look at um, what a layout looks like. So some of you guys might not have uh, seen a layout before. Uh, so let me let me show you guys my own stuff, and then we can we can go from there. Why will you not? I just want my screen open. Come on, there we go. Uh, let's go. All right, can you guys see me sharing my screen? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Um, so mm -hmm. some examples over here. Um, I'm gonna pick a, 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 a relatively okay one. A sim simple enough one. Mm -hmm. So let me show you the actual shot first, and then I'll show you what the layout for it looked like. So that shot, let's take a look at the shot again. It's a very quick shot, but this one was super complicated to do. So. The dog grabs the rifle and throws it in the air, and the camera whip pans down again. Whip and down, and then we see the guy running, right? So in order to plot out that shot, I needed to make this whole sequence. Okay, so what you're looking at over here are several elements. You see the character layout um, of the dog, uh, the rifle being a prop layout, and then our guy running, and then we see an overlay a, um, an environmental overlay over here and then you'll notice there's a little splash of white over there which is the f effects animation overlay on top of it so I, I didn't draw the whole dog every time the reason for this is because when the shot is cropped i'm not going to see the whole dog so it was very important to kind of demonstrate that you know this is what you're going to see in the shot here's another good one um, with a background and then the character overlaid on top of that, and then the branches overlaid on top. And then mm -hmm. here's the final animation. Now you'll notice there's actually a little bit of variation, right? Um, I also made the lighting, the comma Rebi lighting over here, and that was an effects animation that we needed to put uh, on top of it. You'll notice that the final background actually came out a little bit different here. Now the reason why it was a little bit different is um, after looking at the, the first one, we decided it, it, it's a little too cramped. So we, we pulled the camera back a smidge um, in layout, um, which is generally not something that you want, right? Uh, this is one of the few ones where that's like such a big difference in, in, in terms of what we had. Um, and then over here, while the dog is peeing on the rifle, we show the arc of the chocolate bouncing in the water, the splash effect, and then the final resting place of the chocolate. And then if we take a look at that here you go splash and the dog now what is missing over here and this was an oversight on our side is the effects animation of the chain 
Um, so that's a that's a good example of be careful of mistakes, right? Um, we kind of forgot, right? Whilst the leash, we, we drew the leash in here. When we animated, we actually kind of forgot about the leash. Um, and then about three weeks before deadline, um, I, I I kind of took it upon myself to to animate everybody's leashes for them, which was actually a lot of fun. I learned, you know, like the very interesting things about how to animate a chain, which is pretty pretty cool. So this one also, what this the shot didn't make it into the form actually, but it's a pan down with a character overlaid on top and then branches beneath it. These are actually just environments. So it doesn't really help. I show them. Um, Another okay example is, is this one over here. Uh, where this one mostly has boards. It does not have character layout in it, but uh, this was an environmental design one. And you'll see here we've got one, two, three, four environment overlays, plus then the character being overlaid and underlaid um, here and there, right? Like overlaid at first and then underlaid and then finally set, settling over here. So this is a, a very complicated shot. I think it took me about a week to build to build this environment out. Um, so that's a layout, right? Um, th this is more or less the standard that you, you need to, to look at for layout um, in terms of how to render it, what it's supposed to look like. Um, cool, any questions so far? Um, I'm guessing so this is more just in terms of like making life easier when you work with stuff like that which software as you found is the the best for like planning this stuff out because I'm old school I like After Effects but I've heard Storyboard Pro and Toon Boom are good for these sort of parallaxing things as well yeah you're, you're not really gonna have a say in it you're gonna use what your studio wants you to use um, so a lot of a lot of Toon Boom studios swear by Toon Boom. If you're going to be doing any type of background in a studio in Atlanta, for example, you're actually going to make your layouts, your backgrounds, everything um, in Toon Boom itself. Um, if you're going to be working at Floyd, however, you'll be you know jumping between Photoshop and some 3D software. Um, the thing that I'm most excited about is actually using Blender, which I've been dabbling a little bit with um, in terms of 3D layouts. Um, I've used uh, Storyboard Pro for layout passes as well. Um, I used to use Storyboard Pro actually for my layout workbooks um, pretty well. I don't. I honestly don't think there's a there's a a right tool for it. Uh, what I would say, however, is anything with a, a perspective ruler is going to be just dandy. Um, so if you're going to use Photoshop, just get yourself lazy Nazumi for perspective ruling. If you've got Clip Studio Paint, which is, I, I never touched Photoshop whilst working on Twin Day. Um, I did all my layouts there in Clip Studio Paint because I am not paying $60 a month for Photoshop anymore. I'm just not doing it. If you're not going to pay it for me, I'm not going to use it. Um, so those have perspective guide tools in them. And, and because of that, they're actually like very, very, very useful. Um, so it, it, it really, it comes down to the, to the studio, Ginny, honestly. Um, and again, what that means is get good at getting good, not get good at a, at a, at a software package. It's, it's not going to uh, give you what you want if you just like solely rely on a, on a, on a software package itself. Um, I have a question. So, yeah. when you take the story, so when you take the story, what you examine the work, you analyze the the shot, and then when you start to make the workbook, you see, okay, like these are the overlays and underlays that I have to to separate. So then, when you start drawing, you'll draw those overlays and underlays on a separate layer. Um, for exactly. When yeah. Uh, yes. Okay, cool. that's very. Um, that that's very close to what you'll be doing. Yeah. Okay, and then do you give that to the animator or do they just get the line drawing? Just the uh, line drawing? No, no. So, so I'll, I'll, explain, I'll, I'll explain that in a, in a moment, uh, like what the general task for that would be. But no, you're not going to give the, the workbook to the animator. Um, actually, you're probably not going to give the workbook to anyone. Um, it's something that's going to stay um, in the layout department. Um, and it might be something the director touches and it might be something that the 
um, uh, maybe a background artist or two might touch, but uh, it's not something that your animation team itself is is going to have, right? Um, pipeline wise, I would I would kind of compare whilst it's not uh, whilst it's not kind of the same. Um, if you take a look at animation, the first step is always to shoot reference, right? That should always be your first step. Um, however, with uh, layout workbook, the analog to that would be your first step is a workbook. Um, it's not something that you'll likely give to anyone outside of your layout team. Um, although, you know, you might give it to the background guys. Okay, but then how do the compositors know do they, to to separate the layers all that back on us? Because I mean, as they'll look at it, but the workbook is supposed to help them know when to separate oh, when they're painting. Yes, it, it is going to help them. But what the compositor will likely be using would be your actual layout, right? You can probably give them the layout workbook. It's not going to like hurt um, to give them that. Not not one bit, of course, right? Um, but uh, generally speaking, you know, it's it's a step for layout. Um, so I, I will show what I mean by each of these things, right? In a in a moment, I just gotta um, run through the, the the process, essentially. Okay, cool. Thank you. Awesome. Anyone else? Um, yeah. Uh, just to get an, a general understanding. So with uh, cool. when we. Can... Uh, when you're working with uh, layout, so as as a as a layout artist, you would have to like name your um, parts of your layout correctly so that compositing can be far much easier in in in, in the workflow, right? Yes. So so yeah, so it would it would need you to actually understand when or, or like which part like which part would you use? Like, would you number them? Would you um like I'll, put letters or will it depend on the on the yeah. studio i'll show you guys how to do that in a moment okay all right uh let me just grab a, a good you know what i'm gonna just grab it from here um i mean this is out already so i i guess there's no there's no harm in uh in in showing you guys actual work we we actually did um so I'm going to use an example of my own boards, right? Um, from from Archer. So yay, uh, you guys get to see what actual storyboards from Archer looks like. Um, I don't know. I saw I saw Mishi here earlier. I don't see her anymore. Mishi actually boarded with me on the sequences. Um, so it's it's a pity she kind of like dipped out of the uh, the the conversation you ting i think you remember me she you guys used to study together oh and you actually have a question here so you ting let me answer real quick when you draw the background details are those the final background designs or are they just more detailed suggestions so generally speaking um they need to be very 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 precise right so your your layout needs to be like 99 percent what the background painter is going to make um as you could see with the short form we actually had a little bit more flexibility now, part of the reason why was our background artist was actually a traditional oil painter. I'm going to switch off my camera at this point because I really think I need it. Um, our camera, our, our background artist was a traditional oil painter, and he actually made oil paintings for every, every background. So they had a lot more variation and change in them than, than, than regularly. But um, generally, in terms of industry, no, no, no. What you what you make for layout is exactly what the background guys are going to copy. They're going to do it like to the T, right? So your 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 layout has to be very very precise. Uh, Blackguard also asks: uh, So should the layout artist uh, plan extensively for how the layers will work? Yes, that is exactly what the what the layout artist is going to do. So, and do they get the opportunity to plan with different ways? Yes, you will get that opportunity, but I mean, obviously you're gonna have a director directing you. Um, again, guys, however, I should stress this, it is pipeline dependent, it is studio dependent. Um, you'll probably not do this at, at Floyd County. Um, you will probably do it um, in a studio in France, uh, or you will definitely do it at Simlochong, and you might probably do it 
at mind's eye in a slightly different way from 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 what I'm showing here. Um, the the idea of talking about workbooking right now specifically is um, to show you guys how to plan, right? How to think about layout in a way that's not going to to mess you up. And actually, hey, Milo's uh, here as well. So Milo Wildcat, you're actually working on Twenty, so you you can totally call me out on bullshit here if I'm talking out of my ass because um, you're working on it. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit about it. So yeah, Hi. again, like I said. Oh, sorry. I have sorry. a follow up question. Um, yeah. Does that mean that the layout artist is the background designer, or would you work with a background designer to create like the line work for um, the layout? So it's a little bit of a, 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 a back and forth, right? So, so, so like Danielle can show and, and, and a taste. What's going to happen is your art director is going to create a Bible for you for your episode, right? And tell you, this is generally the feel that we want, right? So the layout artist team on, on 20, for example, kind of, we kind of did it from the ground up. Um, a lot of the shots that we made and a lot of the things that we worked on, um, we had to devise ourselves. But that's not always the case, right? Because there was a lot of legacy work, a lot of work that went into the pilot episode that we basically reused or just drew from different angles, right? And then sometimes something that I would put in the layout might be completely unusable um, for the background guys, and they might actually do a little bit of creative input um, uh, by themselves. Now, if you're a very, very, very small team, and I'm talking like maybe two people or three people working on a film, the background artist and the loud artist are going to do the same job, uh, but it's really not what you want to have because it's it's exceptionally time consuming and and generally not a good idea, right? So it it is definitely like industry dependent or or pipeline dependent which studio you want to go for, right? So um, like Milo can they 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 did sometimes you know like there's a lot of the background art that they would do themselves, um, and other times the layout the, the layout guys would do the 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 you know the uh the blueprint for it okay thank you and yeah danielle if i'm talking shit, right please feel free to just say actually um tina's gave us the absolute worst um layouts um and we hated every moment working with him like that's totally totally fair to do because i do think i gave you guys some some bad ones <laughs> every now and then Yeah, I heard Tom's come. All right, cool. So uh, where was that? Okay, did I download it? Let's see. No, I didn't download. That's weird. Okay, hold up. Where are my layout samples? There we go. So actually, you'll see here. Uh, okay, a lot of this stuff I can't show you guys. Sorry. So I'll try and be as quick as I can here. Uh, oh wait, these are layout samples. Yeah, these I can't actually. Um, sorry, guys. Uh, sorry, mm -hmm. that's uh, that's NDA. You didn't see anything. Um, here, let's grab a let's grab a, a good one. So this was a a, a very very fun sequence mm -hmm. that I, I I worked on at uh, at Floyd County doing. Um, uh, doing Archer. Let's just wait for it to download, finish that. Oof, I hope I have data by the end of the day. We'll see. Okay, cool. So this guy is open. All right, so here's the storyboard, right? Um, from Archer. And, and uh, we'll just focus on this sequence here, not this one. This one was very simple. It's a it's a background effects overlay on top, and um, watch your face. So this this shot here is a very good example, right? This one right here. Um, so what you're seeing here is a background, and then you're seeing two characters, and you're seeing effects on top of it, right? Um, when I boarded this, I actually boarded it as though I was a layout artist, and I actually made my underlays um, going forward in in the shot. So I'm gonna just steal this this frame. 
Blink. Cool. And we're going to copy this, right? And you guys can still see my screen and, uh, and, and so on, right? Yeah, can still see a screen. So, and yeah, Ginny, Pam was hands down the most fun to board. Like, I love Pam too much. Um, all right, guys, so what you're looking at here, this is a, a standardized format for a layout workbook. Um, so I'll drop this one in the in the chat when we're done today, and you guys can, if you want to use it, you're free to use it. So what you're going to be doing, let's uh, put this sucker in here. Bloop. I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this in here, my little storyboard panel. And then I want to make a copy as well. And the reason why we're making a copy, we'll, we'll, we'll show in a moment. Uh, some of the, the boxes here are going to be completely um, redundant for what we're doing, but it really depends on what type of production you're doing. If you're doing a feature, by the time you're doing all of this, you'll already have a value script and a color script in place, um, as long as well as the storyboards before you touch the, the, the layouts, right? Um, we're not going to have that right now, so it's not really, um, it's not really that, uh, that relevant. So everyone sees this fine right it's not too blurry or or, or too difficult uh, to see or or, or so on right no, yeah it's fine good. everyone's good all right cool 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 nice so what the layout art artist is going to do from the storyboard is i'm going to look at this critically and 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 what i want to do is ask myself okay where um where am i going to do what um, and and what what is overlaid on top of what? And this is going to require you having to go through the sequence, right? Because if you're not going to go through the whole sequence, you're actually going to miss some stuff, like the fact that I've got smoke effects behind her, but I also have smoke effects in front of her, right? So this shot, whilst relatively easy in layout in terms of the fact that the characters aren't really moving and they're staying in three quarter well pam is staying in in three quarter and um, alicia is staying in semi pro right um, and they never actually change um their their angles now, if you guys remember from last time we were talking about semi pro pro etc that that's where that comes in right um so it stays a technically complex shot but the animation not so much Okay. However, I've got a few problems here, and I, I think you can even spot them when you're doing the animation, right? Which is Pam's left leg is behind Alicia here, right? But her right leg is above Alicia. And then her one hand is overlaid on top of and over Alicia's hand. And then um, Alicia's furthest hand is, is uh, uh, underlay beneath that. So we actually have a very complex sequence here. Now, if you're doing this in, in 2D animation, traditional 2D animation, it's not that hard because I'm going to animate these together. But if I'm going to comp, if I'm going to be using uh, rigs or anything a little bit more complicated than that, this becomes a very, very, you know, like difficult um, tangle of uh, of things that I need to keep track of. And if I if I get it wrong, if I make a mistake, you're gonna make the mistake, exact mistake that I actually made in my boards here, which is in this frame, Alicia's left hand is not overlaid on top of uh, Pam's arm, uh, whereas in this frame it is, All right? Um, and then over here, much the same thing with the sequence. Bup, 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 bup. All right. Uh, this is actually the exact same shot, but you know it's just a little bit cleaner. Um, so what you're going to do is you need to take a look at and count what each of these things are going to be, right? Um, and that 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 makes sense so far, right? Yes. All right. 
cool. So before we actually build our workbook, let's talk about vernacular. Um, so I'm just going to make a new, new layer. Well, a new document anyway. And uh, yeah, guys, again, very, very sorry. I'm going to be doing this with, uh, with my mouse, which is uh, definitely not preferred, but you know, well. So I'm going to draw a little XY graph and this over here, let's say our background, our actual background, our main background or a BG main or whatever you want to call it is here. It's a building with a window or something like that. Um, any character that is in front of this plane, this building, all right? In my multiplane camera stack. Um, let's say I've got my second plane over here. And in my second plane, I've got a I've got a character bloop like this, all right? Little. Uh, okay, maybe we should make him not as male as he is right now. Um, there we go. That's better. So this guy is um, overlaid on top of my background, right? So what he would be called would be overlay, mm -hmm. OL for overlay, one. Now, what is he? He is a character. So overlay character. And which character would be the next one? his name. Maybe I could just type this out and see. So we've got overlay one character. Cool. Everyone's still with me, right? Oops. Yeah. Still here. Yes. 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 You can hear me. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So that's that's overlay character car and him character and him and his name. Now let's say in front of him I've got another background, right? And in front of him is a table. He's walking behind the table. So this would then be overlay two. Um, well, EMB for environment, table. This guy over here is going to be overlay named as an environment and then table. Now, let's say this guy walks around the table and now stands in front. What that means is at some point, I'm going to make a duplicate, right, of this guy. And he's going to be in front of the table. So this would be frame dependent. So on frame 100, we switch off overlay one and we switch on overlay three character anim name. That makes sense, right? Because then I just walk around the guy. So instead of having to mask and do a bunch of cuck in, in, in After Effects, mm -hmm. I can just duplicate my animation and um, when the character walks around the chair or the whatever, I switch off the, the lower layer and I just continue on a new layer um, with the correct time uh, frame rate. Then anything behind my background, right? Anything over here going this way, pop, 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 is not an overlay. 
but an underlay. And it counts like an XY graph. So it'll be underlay one, underlay two, underlay three, underlay four, if you have that many. Cool, does that make sense? Okay, no, it makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. This would have saved my mm -hmm. the trailer for CTIF, I wish I'd known. <laughs> You know, yeah, uh, Daniela told me the same thing, and I'm I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry I wasn't there, but now you know, right? Um, so let's build our let's build our um, workbook. So what's definitely going to help is if you color code uh, when you're doing the uh, workbook. So I'm going to do the jankiest version of. Um, of my color coding ever. I'm going to grab that and just go control U. Um, I don't know why uh, this is super annoying. I don't know why Clip Studio Paint does not have the colorize function. It is uh, something that annoys me quite a bit. But what you would do is you would color code your characters as red. For, for example, you don't have to color code them as red, right? You can color code them as whatever your studio wants. Um, you can take your effects. Again, I apologize for my absolutely dog shit lassoing here with my, with my brush. And you can color code them in their own color as well. And the background, you can, you can keep gray. All right now, if you've got multiple different characters, you can actually color code them as well. Doesn't really matter what you choose, just stay consistent. Right, so if your characters are um, going to be yellow, for example, then they always have to be yellow. And then speaking of, let's just make, um, let's just make a, a yellow for the prop over here, right? Because she's holding a stake. And um, I do want to just show that as well. All right, cool. So you've now, kind of separated the elements for yourself in your in your um, workbook. So let's start uh, talking about our overlays. So the first layer, uh, we'll see if you guys can start. Uh, once you once you get the hang of this, it's actually pretty easy to see what it is that you're looking for um, and, and how to arrange this. But anyway, so uh, first one, we're going to say BG main. And we're going to say this was a scrapyard, so scrapyard. And why do I? It's 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 very 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 important that when you're doing this, you actually name these according to the naming convention um, that your studio has and the actual name of that environment design, right? Because then you, the background guys, everyone on F track, everyone knows what's going on. Okay, so. The first overlay on top of this. What do you guys think the the first overlay is going to be? I'm going to give you guys a guess. Um, I would say whatever is coming closest to the foreground. Um, so probably those blue little effects. It's going to come past her. Um, or is that the opposite way? Right uh, yeah, that's the that's the other way around. Okay. So it's going to be, you're not wrong, it's going to be, so overlay one is going to be effects. So overlay one will be effects anim smoke trails or whatever it is that, you know, the design team are calling those effects, right? I don't know why this thing's being difficult. Uh, oh yeah, it'll help if I do that, right? Um, so that'll be my first overlay. Then the next overlay after that is going to be overlay two, car, uh, car anim, so character anim. And it's going to be yeah. um, Alicia's hand, right? So Alicia hand left after that will be overlay and and as you guys can see this is actually a very 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 complex shot 
right? Um, after that will be overlay three. Um, I'm not going to keep on saying Karen, but you you are going to have to. But it would be Pam uh, left leg left leg left. And then overlay four will be Alicia body and overlay five will be Pam body and then overlay six will be Alicia's left hand. Well, actually first um between these two i'll have actually overlay um four underscore prop and a knife and then after pam's body will be alicia arm why don't you type yeah alicia so overlay seven And so Alicia arm left. Okay. My battery is dying, so it's uh, very slow. And then the very, very last one that I'll do on top of all of this will be overlay eight. Again, FX and um, smoke trails. And that is going to be my asset list. So everything that needs to be made is going to be all of this. Now, when I give this to my layout artist, he needs to finalize all of these layers for me. When I give it to my comper, right, the comping artist is literally going to create an After Effects file and name all the layers as such. And he's going to make them the appropriate type of layer. Is it a 3D layer? Is it a um you know uh, uh, image batch whatever it is and really what's going to happen at that point is um what the animator exports right will be these overlays of the animation it'll probably be the ink and paint artist that that, that exports this not the animator but this will literally be so once the, the character animation has been inked and painted, if I'm using a traditional pipeline, not like a modern Toon Boom one, but if I'm using a traditional pipeline one, what the comping guys are going to have to do is, you know, like animate, export a version of the leg, export this knife, export her body. And all of these are their own image batches, right? And then all you really have to do once you hit compositing is stack all of these together in After Effects and you should be good to go. Then alongside this, you'll also, of course, have your characters. So the characters here are Pam and Alicia, right? And um, if you're going to be very picky about it, you can say uh, Pam three quarter for the model sheet so that you can have the exact model sheet that you need and Pam, uh, Alicia uh, semi-pro if that's even needed but that would be something that the the character layout artist would need right so that's the the technical planning side of it now um alongside this you'll add your c number your sequence number your frame count if you have a color script and a value script you'll add those if there's dialogue and sound effects you'll add this for the dialogue people and the sound effects people to know and then time of day location camera movement uh, camera notes. Um, if there are 3D elements, what are the notes for that? If there's specific animation notes over here, I would say keep Pam and Alicia in set position. So three quarter and semi pro only. Um, so that my animator knows not to have like complex twists and stuff um, in the animation. Right, so that's the type of thing the layout, the character layout artist would be responsible of, for saying, or the uh, director for that matter. 
um, and then your effects and comp notes, your 3D elements. And, and this is something we added at SCAD. It's just what is the difficulty of this layout? What is the animation difficulty and 3D difficulty? So there's no three. OK, actually, there is 3D effects in the shot, but um, I'm going to assume that this was 3D. So the 2D uh, is none. Animation difficulty is about a three and a half out of five. Um, it would be a five out of five if we had different twists and stuff. But because we're sticking to um, three quarter and semi pro positions, we're we're not doing large twists in the body. And then the layout difficulty itself. Yes, this is average, right? This is not, it's not a difficult layout. It's going to be difficult to animate. So the layout difficulty itself is about like a three, three and a half out of five. It's not, it's not like a, 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 a complicated layout per se. So I'm assuming it's important for a director to fully understand all of this, not just slightly. So they, yeah, no, the, the director needs to know how to do this, right? So. Um, for example, I'm starting directing on a short form, um, well, not a short form, but a pilot episode for a series in a few weeks, right? And for that pilot episode, I'm basically going to be doing all of these workbooks myself. Now, if you're the director or the art director, again, if you worked at Floyd County, you're not going to do what I just showed you, right? But the art directors over there have their own system of how to put these things together, right? It's it's not quite the same thing. They actually use listings and stuff like that. Um, I wish Chris was here. Uh, he's my layout buddy from Floyd. He could probably have a chat about that um, some other time, like how they do layout. Um, maybe we'll get him next week or the week after that. So the directors there would have a different approach, right? And uh, we also didn't do this at uh, Mind's Eye. Um, although I did ask um, quite a few times that we that we implemented, I think we were just a little uh, crunched for time. But what it would do is um, significantly lower the, the the need to problem solve stuff at the production side of things. By the time you're doing production, the amount of problem solving you're doing should really be um, at the absolute minimal. You should really know what you're, what's up. So. If as a director, you're not going to be doing a layout workbook like mm -hmm. this one, which is very close to what Disney used to use as this type of layout workbook, then at least have a different process as well. Um, it's 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 super important to be able to, to plan this ahead. If you don't know how to put a shot together, that shot will fail. Um, I, I, I promise you that. Or you're going to spend hours and hours and hours in comp trying to figure out how this works. And you don't want that. Don't waste your fucking time in comp, right? Trying to put things together. Waste your time here. Do this. Um, then the amount of things that you see might be wrong over here are actually minimal. And it's changes that a comping artist can make on their own. And then if they want to do effects on top of it and add a little bit of extra spice, like a shadow or a room lighting or whatever it is that they want to do, then they can do that. Um, without having to worry about all the cuck that they're trying to clean up from the animator and the background artist. Is it the director or director who does it? I mean, yeah, Lola, it's gonna it's it's gonna depend on how big your studio is. Um, I would prefer if uh, if a director does it and also art director and director are interchangeable right so at floyd county we only had art directors um there's not a director per se you've got three art directors and each of them supervise what you're doing um it's actually not that common in in series to have like a director for a show you're usually gonna have two guys and they're actually art directors especially if you're going to be doing outsourced animation right then who's the director it doesn't the the the, the thing doesn't actually make uh, make a lot of sense so it's going to again that's going to totally depend on the size of your studio um how many people are doing this if you're in a south african setup where you're actually very few people like maybe four or five people then yeah the director is going to be doing this because the director is probably also the art director But yeah, definitely a studio specific problem. Um, and again, guys, what I just showed you is not necessarily something you're going to see in a studio. Um, 
it's a way of doing it. It is a very useful way. It's a very analog, traditional way of doing it, the way Disney would have done it or, or DreamWorks would have done it back in their 2D days. Um, but I find it's still, honestly, in my opinion, it's still the the absolute best way to do it because with a workbook like this, you help you hold everybody kind of um, everyone's clued in on what everyone else is doing, and you can clearly, very clearly, if you're the animator, you can see. Okay, I need to do like four or five overlays here. So I will once I am done with my tie down, and my tie down needs to go to my ink and paint guys. My ink and paint team aren't going to just ink the animation, right? They're going to ink the underlay on its own layer, and they're going to paint for that layer, and then they're going to ink the next layer on top of that on its own layer. Um, and they're only going to know to do that if they've been told beforehand um, with, uh, with something like a good layout. So the next step after this, right, this workbook is to make the actual layout. So this thing, right? The next step after this is going to make, um, is going to be to make a to make a layout. Let's let's grab one that's. Uh, I don't know why my dogs' layouts aren't showing. That's that's super annoying. Um, well, I mean these are actually backgrounds. These are not. This is a background I made. Um, not a not a layout. I'll just go back to these. The next step is then the detailed, actual, pretty nice layout like this one that you'll be making. And then this layout plus the workbook is, which I would advise you give to, you know, like some of the guys, it's not, you don't have to give the workbook to the animator, right? Because the animator can take a look at this layout and see, okay, I know what, what, what I need to do, but I do think the workbook is useful. Um, you'll give this um, layout to the animator to work with. But more than anything, this is for you, the layout artist, to plot and understand what you want to do. And also, before you make the layout, you're going to present this to whoever is your senior so that they can you know, check on your work and make sure that the work is actually good and doing what it's supposed to do in a, in a, in a comp sequence. Cool. Does that make sense, guys? Yeah. I think actually looking at this, even as an animator still learning out, it might even be valuable just to do a workbook to sort of plan your layers for when you actually animate as well. Because like even now oh, I'm sitting here animating a shot with a character with her legs crossed and her foot bobbing, and I'm like, where that knee then overlays to, you know, behind the leg is now also causing all sorts of nonsense. So. Yeah, would have been good to play. So yeah, that's, that's how deep character layout goes then, right? It's not just about posing the character, but knowing exactly what the mechanics are for that character and where which element goes. Now, of course, if you've got a rig, right, a lot of this changes. Um, and the way you're going to handle these things is going to be node-based more than, you know, like the traditional analog way of doing it. But I'm a traditional animator. I, I do frame by frame, and that's what we teach at Simula Hong anyway. So I'm coming from that background more than a than a than a rig one. Um, that said, though, I mean rigs have their problems when it comes to stuff like this, and and to know which which limb overlays on top of which is is something that you know you can very very quickly break a rig by shuffling your nodes around um, if you're not careful. So this kind of thing does help for that as well. So, so yeah, guys, um, super quick lesson, but uh, next week or the week thereafter, I think probably the week thereafter, we'll actually make a layout, right, um, using using a workbook like this one. Um, so, yeah, now's the time for questions, guys. If you've got any, holler. I, I saw Daniel um, type something and then the typing disappeared, so I assume there is a question there. Ah, come on, guys. I see two people. Yeah, there we go. Now I'm starting to see questions. Yes, I want more questions. 
I was going to ask if you covered the older question. Oh, I don't know. Maybe which which older one? Um, Black cards one or Lola's one? So before we, you know, like answer the other questions, whilst whilst you guys are typing it up, let's talk about how this translates into illustration or into book covers or comic books. Um, if you're going to be doing a painting, a digital painting, right? You can you can for sure just you know like free flow paint and see what you come up with, but I don't think that's a good idea. And I think generally speaking, um, studies are super useful and like you know little mini paintings before you do a final painting are are really 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 um, uh, important. But this kind of planning before you even start doing your studies is going to be super, super useful for you to know which elements should I paint where and what what value do I give each of these in terms of color, etc. So you can tweak it a little bit for paintings, but uh, um, you know, essentially how you would paint, plan a painting with a workbook is the same as how you would do it for for uh, animation. Um, now I was going to. Uh, I think someone asked over voice about layers in the painting stage. I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't hear that. Um, can someone answer that? Uh, what was the question about layers in the painting stage? Uh, Ray Ray, this is actually going to work for 3D, right? Um, it's probably not going to be the most useful thing uh, once you do previs for 3D, but Planning out your shots at the very least before you even start your 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 three D is going to require some sort of you know like planning like this. So something that happens a lot with three D that people mistake is they think because you've got a three D environment you can just put your camera in that three D environment and it's going to look perfect every time no matter where you put your camera. This is bullshit, right? We cheat in three D all the time, right? Uh, sometimes we move things closer to the camera, uh, further away. Uh, ultimately, how you frame things are more important. So what a workbook would do, for example, in an interior shot where you want some sort of overlay of a table, you know, doing or a rack focus uh, kind of shot in 3D, what the workbook is going to tell you is this is exactly how we want it to look. So then when you're doing your previs, you know how to shuffle and cheat that perspective. Uh, uh, once you've got the workbook, uh, instead of, you know, meandering around in 3D, trying to make it work. Um, Lola asks, would you do all the workbooks before production once the entire storyboard is done? Yes. Um, this is this is pre uh, this is like post pre-production pre-production, right? Um, I would not touch layout or production or animation before all of this is done. I do not want to sit and uh, fuss around and wonder about how I'm producing something. When you hit production, you need to know what you're doing. You can't, you know, you're obviously going to make mistakes. You're obviously going to try and like problem solve stuff, but you don't want to problem solve like 30% of a shot every time you've got a new shot. You want to problem solve 5% of a shot every time you've got a new shot. So this is absolutely something I would do before I start production. The other side of it is, let's say the shot doesn't work, you need to go back, fix it, or something like that is wrong. Then the quickest way to try and explain it to everybody how to fix it is not going to necessarily be make a whole new layout. You can just draw a workbook to explain, no, this is what I want, right? Um, and that's going to be easier to do than, you know, like doing the whole freaking nailed workbook all over again. Sorry if I missed this earlier. I sadly joined late. I just wanted to make sure I'm understanding. But what I'm getting is layout artists plan these layers for down the pipeline. 
then they design the background and or character for the shot and then these drones are passed around between yes more or less that is it it's going to depend on you know which studio you're working at what your pipeline looks like but generally the the layout artist is going to make a layout workbook like this and then the character layout artist is going to do the character layout based on it and the environment layout artist is going to do the environment based on it and those things then get handed to the animator and the background artist and then the ink and paint artist as well as the comping guy and they all use use these three this like trifecta of character layout background layout and the layout workbook together to make sure that they're um they're all hitting the right notes yeah so yeah you're you're exactly right that's what you do yes it's like advanced storyboarding um because storyboarders are lazy useless people that just think of imaginary cool ideas with absolutely no consideration of the pain and anguish and money it's going to cost the rest of the production team to make their work um i say as a former lead art uh, lead <laughs> so um but if you've worked in production, you know this is true, right? Like, you know that storyboarders have, like, these fucking wild ideas. And if they're not kept in check, they're going to, like, cost you a shit ton of money. I got into trouble at Floyd for that all the fucking time because I wanted to do the cool pose and the cool action stuff. And then they would go, could you not do this because it's just going to cost us too much money to make it. Just keep it to semi-pro and three-quarter and stuff like that. So the type of workarounds we actually had in boards was to make boards like the one I just showed you, where the action looks cool, the shot looks cool, but there's actually a minimal amount of animation. Or when there's a lot of animation, then everything else is minimal. You know, you always need to find that 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 balance between them. If you're going to do a big character performance piece, don't have custom poses, right? Then stick to the pre-made rig and keep it that way. Um, and that's kind of how you how you keep your costs down. So yeah, we're just waiting for some more uh, tippy tappy tappy questions over you guys. So excuse the uh, awkward silence on my part. Part I'm just uh, doing the the question on three bit now. I mean, people could also any... use the voices. Yeah, I mean, guys, please, you can you can just talk that. Yeah, do you have any useful shader tutorials to blend three D backgrounds with two D, or can using AI references help with that process? I'm not a three D guy, so three D shaders and Node V stuff is really not my field of expertise. Um, but there is some really nice stuff on 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 YouTube uh, with three uh, D um, tune shader stuff that that I know. So you know, just doing a, a browse over there. Will help but it's definitely not my field so i'm not going to like uh give uh, suggestions on that sorry um uh, that i can't help much there as for ai um yeah look ai has its place um it's got some useful things i'll do my whole um ai uh rant some other day um but suffice it to say everybody kind of like bitching over the fact that ai is stealing work from art station that lawsuit is really just going to ensure that the only people who can use ai are giant corporations like disney who already have like you know libraries and libraries of work with which to train an ai from and then the little guy can't use it because we all sued ourselves literally sued ourselves out of the ability to use it um now that said however um it's a uh, astounding for now at least ai is actually astoundingly useless for the uh, 2d animation pipeline there's basically nothing you can actually use it for it can make nice pictures it can like m make nice color but that's it there's there's very very little other functionality behind dolly and and uh, mid journey and stable diffusion right now for the animation pipeline it's it's not nearly as useful for animation as as, as it would i mean even for for the painters and i i mean i think ben can probably chime in on this um i know it looks nice but it's actually fucking useless it just doesn't do for you what you think it does um 
you, you need to give so many control parameters for AI to give you a sort of mediocre result and then still edit it so much that you could have just painted it. Um, how long that's going to stay the case for AI, I don't know. Like, fucking nobody does. But um, it's it's not the, 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 the great tool that people think it is. Um, but it is a useful tool for, for certain things, just not not for production itself, honestly. And, um, maybe for ink and paint, right? Like maybe we can use it to speed up our color, our cell shading. Um, I, I see it useful for something like that. But uh, other than that, yeah, no, I don't know. It's not, it's not really that, that useful. I'll have to actually do a, a layout demonstration in two weeks' time to show you guys why um, AI does, doesn't really help us um, much. And, and this is coming from a guy that's done a lot of paintings with AI assistance when I'm noodling for fun. Um, and, you know, like I kind of immediately grew bored of it like two weeks later because it actually just doesn't give me what I want. It's better to just paint it myself. I hope that answers the AI question. I know going over rigs versus traditional, uh, would you consider traditional animation more flexible for layout than rig models? Uh, I mean, it, it, it depends, right? Rig, rigged animation is known to be stiffer. Um, and and far more limiting, right? Uh, you don't want super complex layouts in rigged animation because you're trying to save money anyway. That's the whole point of of uh, a, a rigged TV show. You're not going to really have overlay as much. We did so few actual parallax scroll shots in Archer. It's not even funny, right? There's very 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 little of it. Um, and you know, like when we when we got lucky, we got to use a rack focus, like ooh. Rack focus is nice and cinematic, but actual parallax scroll stuff on rigged animation is is, is very rare to begin with. Um, so yeah, I guess traditional is more flexible, um, but traditional is made for feature and very complex two D. You know, like Castlevania and everything coming out of um, places like uh, Studio Mur and Powerhouse at the moment. Um, so for that type of work, you do want the good multiplane camera shots, right? Um, and then, uh, yeah, I would say it, the, the two fit each other a little bit better. But that's not to say that rigged animation can't use these things, um, because if you look at, you know, something Floyd made, which was America, the motion picture, like, it negates literally everything I just said. Um, it was a phenomenally well-made film with cutout rigs, right? Like, sometimes you can't even tell their rigs so yeah have i ever worked with motion tracking technology well after effects is motion tracking technology but i assume you're you're, you're talking about mocap again i'm a 2d animator um i'm not much of a 3d guy i've done some little 3d short forms here and there that are like 10 seconds long or 20 seconds long but 3d is not my thing so mocap uh no no i've never i've never touched this stuff i um, and unless I want to one day make myself into an anime girl, um, a YouTuber, VTuber character, I don't think I'm going to use uh, mocap. Um, as for motion tracking, yes, I've done that in After Effects all the time. And uh, you just you know put your tracking dots on the on the comp and it, and it does it for you. Uh, the feature film is America, the motion picture. It's on Netflix. It's really fun. Ah, uh, buddy, Ben, yeah, this is good for you to hear, man. Ons, ons uh, chat weer later. Bye, Ben. Nice meeting Bye. you. Awesome. Yeah, nice meeting you too. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys again in two weeks, you say, Tinas? Yeah, yeah, I think the next one will be in two weeks, yeah. All right, sweet, sweet. All right, enjoy, guys.
I love I love the Tom Hanks thing. It's yeah, it's beautiful. It works so well. Thanks. While we wait for questions to come in, I don't know if you want to maybe talk or mention your podcast. Oh yeah, sure. Um yeah, thanks for letting me shamelessly plug my podcast. Um, so, so guys, um, some of you might know Lesejo Foster. Um, so Lesejo is a, a very close friend of Ginny and myself, and, and, and we've known each other for, you know, donkey years. And like three, four years ago, we, um, we started a podcast in France called In, in Pursuit of Appeal. Um, now we're trying to within the next like two months or so we're going to try and uh uh revamp it i think we we managed three episodes last time before uh the reality of kuplan's work workload kind of like um uh, made itself uh uh the problem well not a problem but made itself known um so within the next month or so we hope to have uh, a new uh, a new reboot of our old animation podcast. Uh, in the meantime, if you guys want to listen to the, the the previous three podcasts we've made, they're right over here. And the folks we're actually talking with are, you know, by now, this was like three, four, five years ago. Yeah, this was five years ago. The folks we talked with now are like award-winning directors today. Well, I mean, the Seho is actually one of those directors. He direct he's directing stuff for Disney, right? Like he's just fucking slaying at this point, just kicking ass. I'm so exceptionally proud of him. Um, he's really, really doing good. But I mean, we've got people like Soham uh, Sakraboti, Varun Nair, um, Isabella Litke, um, Juliana. Um, really, really exceptionally good animators. Um, all of whom studied with us at Kupla. And if you want to listen to their thoughts and ideas and, and stuff, uh, I, I do recommend you guys have a listen. So um, hopefully within the next month, once I, <laughs> I've bought myself a focus ride preamp and, and some other stuff uh, for the podcast, we, uh, we're going we're gonna, to um, jump start it back up again. If I may go off of that, um, because it's going to be interesting to see what, like, uh, topics get covered just a reminder to all people on the stream uh, especially from Sadek's side if you want to see events um, or if there's subjects you really want to learn about please don't forget to drop those in suggestion box I do look at it regularly um, and I will try to find people that have the professionalism or you know the, the expertise to host those events so um, always looking out for new events to do and the suggestions from you is generally best Uh, Shannon, as for the notes, no notes particularly, but you guys can find the template PDF for the workbook in the chat. So if you guys want that, you can just download it. Okay. And I have recorded the session. Uh, Tina, so I don't know if you want it on your YouTube channel or if it can go on the SADAC library. We'll chat about that afterwards. Oh, yeah. um, but there Definitely. is a recording of it. Yeah, and then we can, we can call this the, the load shedding spatial, right? <laughs> Um, so I've got like 10% on my battery left, guys. So I'm just going to keep on talking till the battery dies. So if you guys have any other questions, right, just just ask away. Yeah. Hello? yes yes um yeah, yeah let me ask this while my network is still like working because i've been having trouble listening to 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 the whole entire presentation so is this going to be recorded or uh, like can you get a copy of it somehow of the presentation that you did yep it's being recorded by Ginny. she will put it on this attic um uh, website for you guys, and I'll post it over here as well for everyone. Once the, awesome. the, the remote... 
Ah, sí. Ok, nada, no, thank you. Good. What are some of the most common problems you tend to run in with layout design? Um, definitely not staying consistent with uh, the style um, of your environment is, is a big, big challenge. Um, and perspective is the other one, right? Um, I like to brag and think of myself as someone who knows perspective. But uh, even if you are very, 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 very good at perspective, that doesn't actually mean that you're making good perspective for the shot that's needed, right? The shot and the art direction in the shot is more important than your empirical understanding of, of uh, perspective. Uh, not that empirical understanding is actually a thing. But um, so using perspective artistically and then also using this with your set shape language and art direction tend to be the big, big challenges. It gets a little bit more overly complicated once you've got 3D elements, like if the characters are in a car um, and the car turns around or something like that, then the shot becomes an absolute living nightmare, um, which is why people, you know, like tend to avoid showing characters inside cars whilst the car is driving or rounding a corner or something like that because then you need to twist the character around on the bike as he's riding. Now there's, there's um, you know, plenty of cases where this happens in animation, but then you save that for the special shot where it's needed. Um, you don't try and do every single shot like that, right? The, you, you, really the, the, the point of layout is to um, lessen the amount of work that's actually going to get put into a shot um, as much as possible. Uh, whilst still making it look um, artsy and, and cool. Yeah, you're more than welcome, man. It's a pleasure. I love I love uh, talking about this stuff because layout layout's probably the thing I'm the most passionate about because no one ever listens about it or cares. And Ginny, you know this because you're a layout artist as well. It's it's such an overlooked um, area in specifically the South African pipeline. It's just not something we we really care about, and uh, it's pretty pretty frustrating um, trying to explain to people that you're you're putting all your efforts in the back end um, during your comping phase, where you could have done all of that work early on. I think even more frustrating and troubling is that none of this really gets taught in mainstream, like, um, what do you call it, schools and stuff. Yeah, and it's it's annoying. Well. I mean, we we try as much as we can. The, the issue is it's kind of like, I, I find workbooks are a lot like exposure sheets, where um, I keep on telling everybody workbooks, 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 and a lot of people just ignore it and think it's not necessary. Much like a lot of TV paint or Toon Boom animators, right? Just don't give a shit about exposure sheets anymore. They think that I don't need to know an exposure sheet. Why should I have an exposure sheet if I can just animate directly on my timeline in, in real time? And, and the answer is because your work's going to suck because you're trying to plan stuff when it's actually time to use your brain for animation. As for why it's not being taught in South Africa, I mean... Yeah, there's there's plenty of, of like reasons, I guess, but mostly it's just pure ignorance. Um, we we rely on. Oh, Ginny, you're still alive, but I think he might have run out of battery. Um, just to quickly answer the difference between a layout artist and concept artist. Concept artists come up with general ideas for what you could use to put together your world of story. It's really getting, uh, you know, more explorations in what you could execute. Layout is getting very, very specific and making final decisions. Bing. Seems we have lost Tinas. Uh, guys, can you hear me? Hey, you're back. Yeah, I'm on my on. I'll I'll be using my phone. Sorry, the the, the PC just died. Uh, okay. What's the last thing that we said? Um, so we just got a question in here with um, what is, uh, what's the difference between a layout artist and a concept artist? Oh, 
Oh man, it depends on the industry, right? Like a concept artist for games is completely a different thing. I don't think we actually even have concept artists in animation, right? So in 2D animation, concept artists don't exist. I think that's the that's the main difference. We have visual development and look and feel artists, but not really like a concept artist the way games would have um, concept artists. So a game concept artist is a guy that would, let's say you want to concept uh, an environment. That's a guy that would do a, a general painting of an environment, and then he would pick the more complicated, the smaller areas in that concept environment that he made, and then make call outs, um, specific focus on how to paint this prop or how to do um, this texture or how to do this co uh, color. So that's generally what a, what a concept artist would do, whereas a layout artist is specifically focused on how to make um, something work within the animation pipeline for an animated shot, right? So whilst, yeah, you're concepting, you're, 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 you're coming up with stuff, your main focus isn't coming up with stuff, but rather coming up with the solution to how everybody's work fits together mm. into a shot. That's far more important. Yeah, one is really just like figuring out what things could be and then layout is really locking down and being specific. Yeah, what things are. That's a good way of looking at it. At it. Uh, concept art is what things could be. Layout is demonstrating what things are. How is paint and color considered in layouts? Is that left up to the ink and paint team or do the layout artists consider this and set up uh, ahead of time? Well, I'd say if you've got a lot of money, um, you might have the color script and the color keys before you start the layout. I don't think that's too common, but it is something that you might find. But the layout artists themselves will not be doing any ink and paint, but would probably say, what type of inking you're going to be using. Like if it's a medium shot, for example, where the characters close up, you're going to use a different line weight to the character than um, what you would be doing if the character was a, a far shot or an extreme close up. So it would be the, the layout artist's job, essentially, to tell the ink and paint guy what line weight they're using uh, for the inking for the shot. Yeah, this was super helpful and really informative, Tina. Thank you. Um, like last year, I finished a short film and we were at the end of production and like animation was done. And then now it's like time to comp and I realized some of these layers are like, they should have been separated, but they were like painted together and animated together. And now I had to, and like the animators have done their job, it's done, I told them like you got, your, your job is finished. And now I had to go back and try to figure out a way to, to like, fix the problem but literally like at the end of production so I was like I should have analyzed the shot before mm. and seen where I needed to separate layers and where the enemies need to separate layers so thank you for teaching this method because I'll definitely use that going forward Alan uh, you're more than welcome man anything to help um been there done that got that painful t-shirt uh learned that lesson and also can I just say um, I am an absolute massive fan of what you guys pulled off with Naledi. I think um, it looks fucking incredible, and I really can't wait to see more of it. Oh, thank you. And I read that the really means a lot. We are working hard so that we hopefully we go into production at the end of this year. So we're busy raising funds like for the production. So if all goes well, we should be in production sometime towards the end of the year. That sounds fucking rad, man. If you guys need someone to paint your your workbooks for you, I'm right here. Uh, I will. I will. Go, I will get back to you on that. <laughs> that would be so awesome. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. You're welcome, man. Okay, guys. If we don't have any more questions, um, then we could probably like you know wrap up. Again, don't forget to leave suggestions for things you'd like to learn in future. Um, keep your eye out for the podcast. And there will be more events to come.
Hell yeah. Ginny, thank you so much for, for, for uh, recruiting everybody, dragging them and rounding them up uh, to, to come, come and listen. I really appreciate it, man. Always a pleasure. I just wish I could have been a bit more on the ball, but last week, as I say, I was dying. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I've got really weak lungs. Um, I actually want to get rid of them if I could. <laughs> yes, get robot lungs. Yeah. Come aside. Take robot breaths. <laughs> awesome. I, I'm just glad you're okay, man. It's good to know you're feeling better. Yeah, no, I was um, slightly concerned back there because like, it was at the point where I couldn't inhale anymore. Like I'd cough so hard I couldn't actually breathe in. Um, oh, that's yeah, rough. Not a pleasant feeling awesome and yeah guys it was a pleasure thank you for uh <laughs> listening listening to me rant I, I i really appreciate everybody taking the time thank you for the lesson cheers everyone thank you well. thank you bye everybody bye bye bye, bye. So, Tina, it's about this heist. Yes. You will let me know when the time comes. <laughs> when the time comes, yeah. It's it's either the heist at this point, or maybe we should just burn down Parliament first, because I'm so fucking tired <laughs> of, of um, ESCOM not working, man. It's so embarrassing. I was going to, like, really draw some nice stuff. And I'm saving up for one of those, like, battery generators, but it's mm. 9,000 fucking rand. Yeah, they're right? crazy. Who the hell is that kind of money, right? That was what I found like even more infuriating when we had like one of the state and nations addresses or it was someone from ESCOM. I can't even remember at this point. There's so much of these nonsense meetings. Um, but they were saying they're going to now allow uh, private businesses to start selling solar, like less taxed and less restrictions on them. But I mean, well, that is mean? such a huge privilege because like even if I could afford solar, I can't put it anywhere in my property. But like no one can. Honestly, you have to be so rich to just afford basic. You need a fucking yard. You yeah. need a house. You need to be in the right uh, <laughs> climate. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's 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 infuriating, man. But anyway, uh, hopefully within the next two, three months, so uh, like uh, I was going to buy myself a nice guitar. I guess I'm buying myself a generator. Um, yeah. Sorry. Man. Ah, it is what it is. But, yeah. but Jenny, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I hope you guys have a, a, a lovely evening. Oh, I will do. Thank you so much. I'm busy carrying on with this animation that I wish I'd known about the stuff before. Uh, let me send you a little <laughs> screenshot. Um, it's for this uh, animate Cape Town uh, thing that they've got for CTIF. As okay. literally this character's leg bobbing up and down <laughs> was giving me such hell. It's just a screenshot. Um, I still need to oh, yeah. her hair now. I love this character though. She's great. Yeah, she's. Oh, I I really enjoyed how she turned out in the reception that she got. So, very happy with her. Yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, gotta show me when it's done, man. Looking forward. I will do. I'm gonna have try because it's just gonna be a simple loop. Um, because I don't have as much time as I like like to dedicate to this um but it's it's literally just going to be her chilling um at the beach with this nice. little leg going in her hair flowing hell yeah i'm down <laughs> Thanks, man. okay i'm gonna get going you keep well thank you again so much for this i learned so 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 much um that's a pleasure man thank you for for joining yeah, always. I love these kind of things. This is best better.